We've all heard the story of the hook-handed killer that hunted his victims on Lover's Lane, or that mixing diet soda and pop rocks will cause your stomach to explode. Now, something I read when I was looking this up was that that particular urban legend came from the Life Serial Kid. Do you remember Mikey from Life Serial? Ba- yeah, vaguely. You know, hey Mikey, he likes it? Yeah. Okay, so apparently Mikey was the one that started this uh, that particular urban legend. Apparently a rumor started that Mikey had died by mixing Pop Rocks with Diet Soda and the neighbors started calling his mom frantic that, that he had died and come to find out that he was sitting in the living room playing and somebody had just started a nasty rumor and that's where that urban legend got started. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Now these stories, classic as they are, are more terrifying than true. But what about the stories that are true? The stories that are only whispered about in hushed tones in dimly lit tents or around a crackling fire. Take Zombie Road, for example. A story that is as true as the earth is round. Hmm. It, a strong statement to make there. It, it is. It's true. I've, uh, I've gathered much evidence, and I will, uh, I will present it henceforth. <laughs> in the 1970s, a pair of lovelorn teenagers escaping the prying eyes and ears of the public would find their flight leading them here to a silent and mysterious rendezvous where they could be alone. But their clandestine escape would not last. Their romance was a doomed thing that day as they were struck and killed by a train on the very same tracks that Della Hamilton McCullough was killed 130 years earlier. Now, were the young lovers running from something? Were they coaxed onto the railway by some nefarious being? No one will ever know, but the sign reading, Death Hath No Mercy, still to this day swings lazily in the wind, just as it did that day in the 1970s when local residents were asked by authorities to march out and locate the missing limbs of the ill-fated teens. I'm Micah, my wife and co-host is Amanda, and you're listening to The Great American Urban Legend, where each week we bring you a new urban legend from somewhere right here in these United States. This week, on this, our very first episode, we're going to look into the zombie road in Wildwood, Missouri. Now, when I was looking up uh, urban legends here in Missouri, this one struck me in particular because the name of the city itself is freaking awesome. Wildwood. Wildwood. Yeah, I love that. So I had, I had to go with this one. Sounds like it would be from a Western. Right? <laughs> and it very well could have been. Well, and when, when were Western times? Because uh, uh, Della, who, uh, who is the focal point of, of my investigation on the zombie road, uh, died in 19... Or no, I'm sorry, 1850. Yeah, that's what could yeah. be my guess. Be like yeah. the 1800s. So she was probably a gunslinger, which, uh, yeah, which is cool. <laughs> but before we get into this, maybe we should introduce ourselves. Amanda, why don't you go first? Oh, geez, thanks for that. (laughs) All right, um, I'm Amanda. I am a homeschooling mom of two. We homeschooled before everybody else in the world was. (laughs) Um, I don't have many hobbies, which is what you always make fun of me about, but Mm -hmm. I do. I love to read. Um, I'm currently super into like mystery thriller type books, and um, I just like to hang out on my porch, enjoy being out in the country, being around my kids. Um, that's about it. And I'm Micah. I'm a writer and musician. And this was my idea. I kind of dragged Amanda into it. Uh, but she's doing really good, and we're having a lot of fun. So hopefully you'll stick around, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it too. So my job this evening will be to present you, Amanda, and you, the listener, with rock-hard evidence that cannot be shaken or questioned about an urban myth or a spooky campfire tale, and it is your job to listen, to be drawn in as I weave you a tale so exciting, so exhilarating, and so fantastic that you will have no choice but to believe in the unbelievable. Ooh. Right? So, allow me to set the stage. A city like any other, Wildwood, Missouri, a gateway city on the western edge of Missouri is home to the Dr. Edmund A. Babbler Memorial Park, Rockwoods Reservation, Hidden Valley Ski Resort, and Bluff View Trail. It is, for all intents and purposes, your quintessential Midwest city, with numerous eateries and a newly reinvigorated downtown area. But what sets this city apart is not its restaurants or outdoor activities. What sets this city apart from any other is that it is home to the Zombie Road. The Zombie Road starts in Wildwood, at the intersection of Highway 109 and Old State Road, and meets the relatively new Al Foster Trail near the Merrimack River in Glencoe. 
It was named Lawler Ford Road in the 1860s and is said to have been an ancient path used by Native Americans for access to the Merrimack River and beyond from the high bluffs on the other side. The name's origin is still unknown to this day, although in the early 1800s a ferry boat ran near this area to cross the Merrimack and a ford was located here for settlers and travelers to cross. Okay. So just for some geography, yeah. where exactly in Missouri is this? It is... Would recognize it. Well, okay, so it's, I guess it's in St. Louis County. Okay, so okay. near St. Louis. It's way west. Like, like here's the border. Here's Wildwood. Okay. It is right on the border. So, like, almost Illinois. Yep, as okay. far west as you can go, smack dab in the middle, all the way west, yeah. Okay. So in the early 1900s, this area became a resort community in the Merrimack River clubhouse area, with many summer homes and clubhouses that eventually became regular residences until they were destroyed by local flooding. Once luxurious summer getaway homes and year-round residential river houses lay scattered about the Glencoe area now, just empty, decaying shells, the joy and laughter, the merriment and mirth of the families and friends enjoying summer afternoons on the riverbanks and hide-and-seek games through the woods are no more. Instead, there is only desolation and ruin. Do these houses harbor apparitions or manifestations of something more... Sinister? Sinister, <laughs> yes. The Pacific Railroad made its way through this area in the 1850s, and Della Hamilton, the star of my investigation was Justice of the Peace and Court County Judge at the time. And in 1876, she was struck and killed by one of the Pacific Railroad's trains. Now my hypothesis that I will prove to you is that she is the original, the OG of Zombie Road. Could her spirit be trapped between this life and the next, seeking revenge upon the owners and operators of the Pacific Railroad and their heirs? Yes, mm. yes, they are. Okay. And I will, I will prove that. So why is she called a zombie instead of a ghost? Well, she would be considered a ghost. But the road is called Zombie Road uh, for a lot of different reasons. Probably because it sounds really good. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to call a road something, I'd probably call it Zombie Road as opposed to Ghost Road. Okay. Maybe. But there are, there are, there are a lot of other uh, manifestations and, and things like that, that that happen here. A lot of... A lot of uh, Voices, a lot of footfalls, a lot of noises, uh, even even creepy old timey music like mountain music, okay. like played on uh, played on jugs and spoons and, and washboards and stuff. They say they hear that kind of stuff, which is crazy. Like the stuff uh, you hear at Silver Dollar City. Exactly, exactly <laughs> like the stuff you hear from Silver Dollar City, uh, but it's all true. <laughs> and I could also I could not find any evidence of this, but it is also true that. Della McCullough had a five-year-old son. So just keep that in the back of your head. Okay. All right. Uh, more recently, this area has been a mecca for all things macabre. Ritual sacrifices. Uh, it's funny. I was, uh, do you remember when I first learned the word macabre? And you, you're actually supposed to, uh, was it, is it a French word? I thought it was macabre. <laughs> no, it's macabre, but it's you you kind of pronounce the re at the end with like a rolling r okay. so like macabre <laughs> right so when i first learned that word i tried to say it like that and you made like crazy fun of me i think it was you and your sister that I'm made fun of me sure we would have yeah so uh so i looked up how dumb americans say that word and it's macabre Okay. So, yeah. So that's what we're sticking So that's with. what we're going to stick with. Okay. So, so more recently, this area has been a mecca for all things macabre. Ritual sacrifices, occult dealings, portals to the beyond. But is this actually true, or is it just the natural tendency for those type of stories and legends to be born from one another, growing more and more twisted and fantastical each generation? So there are many theories and legends as to why the Lawler Ford Trail came to be known as the Zombie Road. From the old-timey or mountain music we were talking about earlier, the Silver Dollar City music. <laughs> it's like, that's deliverance music. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's mountain music, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. To the dead railroad workers rising from their graves to continue their work that was taken from them in their deaths. Uh, but there's one particular one that I thought was very interesting about a mental patient nicknamed Zombie who escaped from the nearby mental facility and was never found. All he left behind was a bloody gown. I thought that one was pretty cool. But you know what? I I couldn't find... I didn't think there was a mental hospital in Wildwood, Missouri. 
Well, but was there one like back in that time? True. Well, here's one in St. Charles, which, I mean, St. Charles is near, I know it's on the east side, uh, but St. Charles is close to Wildwood. So, mm-hmm. so that could be it. Yeah. We're going to say that was it. So, a um, a mental health patient nicknamed Zombie who escaped from the mental health facility in St. Charles, uh, which we just recently found out was true, uh, was never found, but only left behind a bloody gown, which I thought I thought was great. The path itself, this twisting, narrow, two-mile stretch of overgrown pathway, would be enough to give anyone a claustrophobic episode. Not being able to see in front of you as the serpentine trail slithers back and forth, keeping what is ahead just slightly out of sight, the tall, looming oaks creating a leafy canopy above, blocking any natural light while the buxom pines and shrubbery crowd in from all sides. How are pines buxom? Well, they're... They're... Busty. Like fluff, <laughs> like fluffy. Okay. No? Sure. I, don't, I don't know. Never heard that before. I've, well, you know, you're not the writer. Nope. <clears throat> while the buxom pines and shrubbery crowd in from all sides is home to lore and legend alike but unlike so much lore and legend we're used to, there is no happy ending or lesson to be learned here. I guess there is a lesson to be learned here, just not a good one, right? I guess so. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Don't, don't go to Zombie Road. Don't walk the Zombie Road. <laughs> right? Uh, not only will you get ticketed, maybe even arrested, if you go in past uh, sundown. What? Um, yeah. They have it. Uh, so it's, it's closed off. You can't, you can't even go through this part of the trail. Uh, they shut it down a half hour before sundown, and they opened it up. A half hour before sunrise. Hmm. So in between that time, you can't go in there. And they did say that it is often uh, monitored by uh, by police officers. So is that just because like they know people are gonna try to? No, I mean no. It's, ghosts? No, it's not because of you know ghost hunters or thrill seekers. It's because Della McCullough is real and she <laughs> will kill you. Okay. So. The police don't want that to happen because then they have paperwork and they have to clean mm-hmm. up and all that kind of stuff. So they don't want to happen. Or they don't want that to happen. Uh, there are numerous reports of a cantankerous old woman who yells at passersby from deep within the shadowy coverings of the forest's natural cloak, but is never found when investigated. So, yeah, there were a lot of reports of police going in uh, at following after stories of a woman in white yelling at people going down the going down the path. Just telling them to get out of here or whatever, you know. Uh, but when people or when police went down to, to look for her, they couldn't find anything. So I thought I thought that was pretty interesting. Mm. Um, Are there any, and there's no homes like in that area? Well, so there's no active homes. There's no homes that uh, a normal person could reside in. Okay. There are all those uh, all those river homes and those summer homes um, along the Merrimack from back in the I think it was the early 1900s. But there was a flood that destroyed them. So, yes, you can go and see tons of destroyed, empty homes, but uh, none that are livable. Okay. Now, it is possible and actually quite plausible that Lawler Ford Road originated as an Indian trail and was used by the local Native American tribes to carry goods back and forth through the forests. Uh, going across the Merrimack and up and down the steep bluffs. That would explain the multiple random disembodied footfalls and footprints often heard and seen along the trail. That's another uh, another report that they have multiple sightings of is footprints just randomly showing up along the trail and hearing numerous uh, footfalls like uh, like marching or walking but in, in, in large number, large quantity. And they're saying those were the Native Americans? Correct. Okay. Those were the Native Americans who uh, who established that trail long before any other civilization was, was there. Even as late as the early 1990s, tragedy found its victims here, as a mother and her five-year-old son were walking down Lawler Ford Road, specifically on the train tracks, when a train appeared seemingly out of nowhere. The mother was able to push her son out of the way to safety, but she was struck and killed. This is something to do with- it does, <laughs> and you do remember that even though there was no fact or uh, record of her having a five-year-old son, she did in fact have a five-year-old son, because my story would not go together <laughs> as well 
if she did not have a five-year-old son. <laughs> Speaking of five-year-olds, another five-year-old boy fell to his death from the bluffs, high above the zombie road, careening down to the trail below, but his body was never found. Della McCola. <laughs> and uh, I thought I thought bl- bluffs were interesting uh, because I was like, well, what, what are bluffs? You know, I never really, never really knew what bluffs were. I looked bluffs up. They're pretty high, craggy, you know, yeah. craggy rock, rock formations. Not quite mountains, but uh, cliffs, that kind of thing. And speaking of these bluffs, a man and his wife were atop those very bluffs overlooking the Merrimack River when he lost his footing and fell off. His face and his head hit a small tree butting out from the cliffside, and as the rest of his body fell eagerly to embrace the zombie road below, his face and his scalp remained clinging to the small tree, flapping gruesomely in the breeze. Oh my goodness. That Ew. Disgusting. Yes, that is disgusting. So the train tracks were eventually closed, due in part to the frequent derailments and accidents along this particular stretch of railroad, but not before taking countless lives. The stories continue to pile up from the early 1800s even to today. Uh, The path is not accessible after sunset, like we talked about, but this doesn't seem to stop thrill-seekers, ghost hunters, and paranormal investigators from gaining access and witnessing the myriad disturbing and unsettling happenings of Zombie Road. The ghosts of American Indians, railroad workers, and children have all been said to haunt this weary and storied trail, but one figure seems to stand out among them all, the spectral old woman that we talked about earlier. So the woman in the woods is Della. Oh, yeah, she is. (laughs) Wait, do we have a picture of Della? Uh, I could not find one Hmm. because (laughs) she is so ghostly. (laughs) Whether she is solemnly wandering the tracks or screaming at intruders or flickering in and out of view to the sounds of old mountain music, she is front and center to all the deaths, all the stories, and all the legends. Could this incorporeal being indeed be Della Hamilton McCullough? So I have presented you not with a great ghost story full of death and mystery, but instead I have given you concrete proof that Zombie Road is indeed haunted by the ghost of Della Hamilton McCullough, Justice of the Peace and County Court Judge, mother of a forsaken five-year-old boy that I couldn't find anything on, and <laughs> killed by a train attack in 1876. Any questions? <laughs> I have a lot of questions. <laughs> well, I'm sure you do, but I have all the answers. <laughs> what, uh, what are your questions? Okay. Let's see here. Well, I, I don't love that we have no proof of um, what Della looked like or... Well, we can look her up. Let's look her up. about that and her Della. son. I think that's a, a big piece of the picture that's missing here. Let's see. Let's get Della McCullough images. Look, there she is right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, that's her over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that could be that could be her. No, that's that's a dude. There's a lot of Della McCullough. Yeah, I'll bet. Look, look. I'll bet it's this one. I'll bet it's this one. Okay. Because so there's Della. 1872 to 1900. Mm, no, it can't be her. No, no, no. 1872 to 1900. Let's see, Della. 1868 to 1946. They obviously just have the the dates wrong. <laughs> because look, son, she had a son. So she died in 18. What did we say, 57? I thought it was 1876. So she died sometime in the 1800s, <laughs> but five years before she died, she had this son right here. Wait, and so 1872 is when the son was born? Correct. 1872 okay. was when her son okay. her son August was born. He was named August because he was born in August. Uh, now, one thing that I did <laughs> not... know that, that is. <laughs> Of course it's true. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, the one thing I did not tell you right off the bat... And the one thing that kind of ties this whole story together, that Della is the the OG of Zombie Road, is that just like the woman who saved her son but lost her own life in the 1990s, Della and her son were walking that very railroad at that very same spot in 1876, and she had to push her son out of the way to save him, but she died. Mm. So the disembodied footfalls and the many footprints, the multiple five-year-old children that have perished. Uh, the, one, right? The one boy. No, two. There were two. 
No. There was the one that fell from the bluffs. Actually, there were three. There was the one that fell from the bluffs. There was Della's own child, August. You said he did not die. He's, you said he... Well, he eventually died. His life. I mean, he... Okay, well, you can't count his death as part of the zombie road. Okay, so there were two. <laughs> then there was a kid that fell from the, from the bluffs, and then there was the kid on the railroad. No, his mom pushed him out of the way. Well, yeah, but he eventually died, too. So there were... Okay, so there was the death of the five-year-old, which directly corresponds with the death of Della's five-year-old. That is not verified. But it is true. Uh, there's also the the old woman in white yelling, telling people to leave that area. Mm-hmm. There is the old-timey... Well, question. Della was not old when she died. So she would not be old now. Have you seen the women from the 1800s? <laughs> I mean, they were, they were done by age 30. Rough. Yeah, yeah. So, so yes, technically she wasn't old, but she looked dang old. Okay. So. Judging off the pictures you have of her. Right, correct. Mm-hmm. So the, the footfalls, the dead children, the... The bluffs themselves, the, the the dude that fell and ripped his face and scalp scalp off when he when he fell, how do you explain that? Because that was an unfortunate accident. <laughs> uh, that was an unfortunate. Della was mad. <laughs> uh, what else did we have? The floods that destroyed all those homes. That happens all the time in Missouri. <laughs> Woman. Yeah. Uh, what what else? Do do we have do we have anything else that? Uh, I mean, I know I've I've laid enough enough foundation here, but uh, let's see. So have, have these um, these ghost hunters ever captured anything tangible? Like like EMF or like sure or video or video? Anything? Yes. Oh really? Uh huh. Tons, but we unfortunately <laughs> don't have any of that <laughs> footage on file. But you'll just have to take my word for it. This just in. <laughs> The five-year-old boy that fell from the bluffs and was never found was actually claimed by the ghost of Della McCola. <laughs> oh, and what about the teenagers who were hit by the train? Can you imagine being asked by the authorities to go and help collect the limbs of those kids when they were hit by the train? Amanda, I have presented you with rock-hard evidence that Zombie Road in Wild, Missouri is Wildwood. in... That's what I said, Wildwood. Wildwood, Missouri, is indeed and has been since the late 1800s haunted by Della McCullough, who was struck down and killed mercilessly in a train attack in 1876. And now she haunts that trail with her new son, the five-year-old boy who was pushed from the cliffs and never found, (laughs) and her original son, August who we have not verified was hers and probably never existed. <laughs> so I ask you now, and listeners, true or false? No, let's see. Let's see that. So I ask you now, listeners. No. So I ask you now, Amanda, and listeners, is the urban legend of Zombie Road fact or fiction? Does the ghost of Della McCullough haunt those roads still to this day? Hmm. I'm a bit skeptical due to the uh, <clears throat> extreme lack of evidence surrounding this case. How are you... What do you mean lack of evidence? I spent at least 30 minutes <laughs> looking up all this information on multiple verified... Um, you just made up the mental hospital. <laughs> no, we looked it up. It was real. It's real now. But how do you think the mental hospital got there? It had to have been built, and it was built in 1876. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, where's the bloody um, hospital gown? It's probably in a museum. <laughs> do you say where is it? I don't know where it is. Della probably has it. That's probably... That's just in the bloody gown from the killer who escaped the middle hospital is actually being worn (laughs) by the ghostly apparition. It's a white. Yes. 
Correct. That the woman in white wears when she yells at people. So with that, we conclude our first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. And I hope I was able to convince you just as I was able to convince my wife and co-host, Amanda, that urban legends do exist. Next week, we will be visiting Stoll, Kansas, one of the seven gateways to hell. If you're not already following us on Instagram, please do so at The Great American Urban Legend. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All those links are on the website. Make sure you give us a like and give us a review. I would love to hear what you guys say, good or bad. Constructive criticism. Constructive criticism. That's right. Well, until next time, I'm Micah. And I'm Amanda. We'll see you soon. Good night. This is your thing. You're the dramatic one. You do the Dungeons and Dragons.